Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit more advanced than what we've been looking at before. And this is to do with the link. So this is going to be a number of videos regarding parametric modeling and using this crate link tool. First, we're going to introduce the crate link tool with a very simple model and learn how it can be used in multiple files. To link in say a part from one file into another. So we can keep our parts separate from our main project. So this video introduces the link tool and the next video creates a project around the link tool, demonstrating the flexibility of it and the parametric capabilities. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this tool. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So we've already created a new document in FreeCAD and we're going to be looking at this tool here. And this is the make link tool. So this tool is available from any of the workbenches. So if we come to something like the part workbench or the part design, we will see that the link tool will still be available. So it stays on this toolbar here. We're going to be using the part for this demonstration and we're going to understand what the link tool is and how we can use it in an application. So first video here is going through what this actually is and the basics of using it before we get into some projects. So what does it do? Well, it allows a way of duplicating an object so it shares the data of the original. That includes both the visual properties and also the geometry. For instance, let's create a cube. And if we come over to the model tab, you can see the cube is sitting there. I can select the cube and create a link by clicking on the icon here, make link. On the left hand side, you can see a link has been created with cube 001. What we're going to do is just right click and transform that. Let's zoom out a bit and you'll see that we have basically a duplicate of the cube, but they're not actually duplicates. They are a linked copy. That's different because some properties are shared across and others aren't. And you can see which ones are shared by coming into the actual linked object and looking down and you'll see the attachments and the map mode are all in green. This means this is shared. And we have properties that are independent of that link object. You know this is a link, this shape here, because we have a small arrow that is on our icon in the toolbar. And if we change the size, say the length to 20, the original will change as well. And we can do that on the other side as well. So let's change this back to 10 from the original. And those two are linked together. Let's come back to the link. Transformation, in other words, placement, well, those are independent of each other. Because we transformed it over to the left, you see the other one didn't follow. And this is not in green, so these aren't shared. If we look at the link, we can find some of the properties that are associated directly with it. So we've got this scale, which means we can scale the object. So I'll set three there. And that encapsulates the other object. So let's right click and transform and move it over. And you can see the original object there. And when we change this, we have a scale on the other side. So this will scale this up by whatever we selected. So I've selected three for the scale here. If we use a minus value, so minus one, we get a mirror. So if I had something that was obvious when it's mirrored, so let's say, let's add a cone. And we'll create a link of that cone using the link transform this. Now this is for any object. It's not the primitives. So we could create sketches, compounds, pockets, pads, etc. And we could use this in our workflow and use a transformation on that. Right click transform and just transform this around this way. And if I use the scale of minus one, you can see that's mirrored that to the other side. Now, if I use minus two, that mirrors and scales the object. 
Now there is an interesting item in here. If I just set this back to one, we've got this count in here. So if we look at the element count, this will create a number of elements. So this one here. So if I set this to four, we get four elements in here. Now I click off. See, it says show element set to true. This means that each of those elements will be shown. And these have independent scale and placement. So we can translate these. Right click, transform, and we can place them in different positions. So just transform these out of the way. So we've got these four here. Again, if I look at the original, well, the link, which is connected to the original, we have the scaling, which I can set. So this gives the scale across all of these copies, all these link copies, I set that back to one. Obviously we've got the mirroring, minus one. But, I set that back to one, we have something additional in here. Look on the left hand side, the show element, if I set this to false and click off, let's go back to the cone. The original is hidden, is the original here, and we get this scale list. So this here, if I click on that and click on the table, this gives a scale through all of the items in this list. I can't actually move this, I'm trying to move it then, but we can't. So I can scale each of these independently of each other. So that's change the scaling along. So we do that one as two, and we leave this one as one, two, add a bit to this one as well. Hit OK, and we get the different scaling across these. So there are some hidden options with the link as well. So let's create something in here. Let's create, say, a cylinder and a sphere and a union control click in both of those and using the boolean to bring these together so we've got this here right click transform and let's give this some angle like so so if i create a link with the fusion by clicking on the fusion and make link and we'll just right click and transform so you can see that it's taken the link as if this hasn't been transformed. That's it, okay. Click on the link and come down to the options for properties and just select any one by clicking on it so it's highlighted in blue and right click and show all. So this will show the hidden elements within the properties. So we've got a number of hidden elements in here. We've got the scale vector. So this allows for non-uniform scaling. I can set this to one, Y is two, and Z as 1.5. Now, one thing we can do with links, let's just delete that, is that we can use them across files. So let's save this. I'm gonna file, save as, and I'm gonna create a new directory and call this link example. And coming to that, I'm gonna save this as parts. So Fusion is inside the parts. Now let's create a new document. And what we're going to do is pull this in into the new document. Now first we have to save it because if I select that Fusion, then come to the Unlane tab and use the link, it's gonna ask me that the only document not saved. So we've got to save it. So let's save this Unlane document. So file, save as, and call this parts, ASM or something like that. So we're gonna pull parts into this file. To do that, click on the parts, to click on your file that has the part, click on the fusion that I'm using there. We select the tab, make sure we don't select anything else and then use the make link. So we've pulled this into the document. When I save this now and close them all, file close all, and then that's open that document now, file, recent files, parts ASM, 
and you can see that the parts ASM has opened with the Fusion and inside that you see the link to the cylinder and the sphere and below we have the original parts file where this has been linked in. What happens if we lose or rename that file? Well, that's close all again. And that's return to the file system and rename the parts. So this file here, I'm just gonna right click and rename that. And we're gonna call this say parts one. So this should break the file. Let's come back in, file, recent files, parts ASM. And you notice that our fusion that's sitting here is broken, it's got an exclamation mark on it. Link not restored. And it says the link file there. If I click on it, and let's just show the usual suspects in our properties, we can see that the link object hasn't got anything in here. To fix it, just click the button on the end, and you'll see the files that we have open. Now the file that we need isn't open at the moment, so let's cancel out, go out to file, open we open our original file so this one here which has got the part that we want it's got fusion in there we look as you can see it's still broken so we come into back into the parts asm click on the broken fusion the broken link linked object click the button on the end and then click in the parts you can see that both documents are open here parts one open that and select the fusion and hit OK. Once we click off, it all refreshes and our link has been connected up. And you can see link object parts one has fusion. There is another way of linking the objects between the files. So let's delete that link. So we've got our parts and I want to take this fusion and place it in to this file. So let's come into this fusion, click on it, hold down the alt key on the keyboard and drag, click and drag this into the file that you wanted to place in. And that comes in as a link in there. So this is all well and good, but what can we use the link for? Link can be used for parametric modeling when we want to organize our files. And that's what we're going to look into in our next videos. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.